Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Uh, I got to talk to you about Russia, the Soviet Union, and the Korean War for a little bit. And we'll be able to draw a few lessons from this, maybe. Uh, some of you may know that uh, the MiG fighter jet has a reputation uh, for being a pretty formidable opponent in battle. Um, and in fact, it was the first fighter jet uh, to see combat action. So, uh, except for experimental crap done by the Nazis, this was the first real military uh, aircraft. Now, I was perplexed by this for a long time. The, uh, the Korean War is where the MiG fighter jet came into its own. In uh, December of 1950, the first MiGs entered duty. And uh, the Americans didn't have anything but propeller planes uh, being used at the time. Good, fast propeller planes, but that's all they had. They didn't have a jet engine plane. And they very quickly lost a lot of airplanes. In fact, there was a day called Black Tuesday um, in uh, Korea where we lost so many bombers, we stopped our bombing campaign. And we had to pull something out of our hat, which we had uh, ready, which was something called a Sabre. The U.S. F-86 Sabre. We had a few of these, a squadron ready, which we rushed from uh, America. I think it was actually in the islands in the Pacific somewhere. And we ramped up production I in America on that uh, aircraft and very quickly run one back um, supremacy in the skies. The MiGs had an ascendancy for approximately two months. Uh, and then we eventually reached a 13 to 1 kill ratio against the MiGs. We killed 13 MiGs for every American plane they shot down, eventually. So, so the, the problem with the MiGs list lasted a very short time, and we very quickly won back supremacy, but out of all proportion to the problems the MiG caused us, the MiG has got a reputation of being a great airplane. So let's look at a few facts about this. Why was I perplexed about this? Because I wonder how could the Russians build a good airplane? Now why, why would that be a question? Some people would just say the Russians built a good plane. You know, they built Sputnik, they did whatever else. Was there something else they did? Sputnik and the airplane. They were the first to fly something around the moon. They circled the moon and took pictures of the far side of the moon. Um, so, once in a while, right, the Russians got to do something. I just couldn't figure it out, though. There's got to be an explanation. Ayn Rand said, Russia, Soviet Union, is the most incompetent uh, nation on Earth. She said that in the late 70s. Uh, in response to Ronald Reagan's campaign, um, she said that Ronald Reagan exaggerates the power of Russia. And she said, exaggerating the power of the most incompetent nation on the face of the earth is not a patriotic service to America. Uh, and uh, for that, and for several other reasons, a lot of books I've read, I just take it as a, as a automatic law of nature, just like the law of gravity and uh, all any other law you can come up with. Thermodynamics, conservation of energy, and we could call this one like the conservation of rationality or I don't know, freedom, something, because um, things aren't produced, things aren't, advancements are not made where people are not free. On the flip side of that, where people are free, advancements are made. Wonderful new things are produced, new ideas come about. So you just have to take for granted that um, that the Russians were incompetent. They had to be, by necessity, because they weren't free. Therefore, if you take that for granted, if you take that as a knowable, as 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 knowable as the law of gravity, and go forward from there, then when you reach an anomaly like the MiG fighter jet, you have to explain that somehow. You have to come up with something that shows um, why they were able to do that outside of the bounds of what was Soviet society. Um, the MiG fighter jet was an exception to Soviet society, as was Sputnik and the work done on the nuclear bomb 
uh, the, the mathematics and so forth. All of these accomplishments were done outside of the Soviet system, so to speak, in certain ways. So the, the basic thing is you have to explain how did they accomplish something. And, and why is that taken as something that has to just be explained? Well, it, it's so reliable that upon looking into this, I was vindicated. Sure enough, it's, it's definitely the case that the Russians did not successfully produce a good fighter jet to compete with the American uh, uh, Air Force. What they did was, they got a motor from Britain, Rolls-Royce motor, in a 1948 trade agreement with Britain. They invited some Russians over, uh, and they took them to the Rolls-Royce factory, and one of the biggest problems with the jet engines uh, that the Russians were having with their current jet engine, which they had captured from the Germans at the end of the war, and their jet engines were originally BMW um, two, ME262s. Those were the first Russian jets. And uh, they had problems with the, with the blades coming off the jet, uh, the engine and stuff. You know, they have uh, hundreds of blades, or like 60 blades instead of the four blades a propeller had. And they had problems with the type of metal that was being made of. They couldn't get a metal that could stand up to what they needed it to do. So one of the things they did, this sounds like a ridiculous story, but they say the Russians, one of the Russians wore sticky shoes, and he walked around the lathe when they went to the factory, they were looking where they were cutting the blades and cutting different stuff, and they walked around the lathe, and he tread all around, and he got the file shavings from the metal, and then they took these back to Russia, and they had the metallurgy, and they had the alloy figured out before they even got the engine shipped from Rolls-Royce. Uh, they get, they get the engine, and they've already got the alloy figured out, so they're that far ahead on that, and then they go forward from there, and they produce the MiG fighter jet around that basis. Two years later, the MiG fighter jet goes into service in Korea and starts shooting down British and American planes. Good job, guys. Haven't we learned our lesson yet? We equipped Nazi Germany uh, throughout the 1930s. We equipped Imperial Japan throughout the 20s and 30s. <coughs> and uh, we started equipping Russia. By the end of the war, Korean War, 827 MiGs were shot down. There's a lot of MiGs they produced. Uh, they basically sent MiGs against us with numbers, large numbers. That, uh, you know, once we reachieved supremacy of the sky, it was just the fact they had so many of them and we could shoot them down and they'd bring more. The, the MiG, like I say, gained a reputation out of all proportionality to the problems it caused us. And it quickly had uh, a, an aura of myth uh, about it. The Russian super fighter jet swept wing aircraft way advanced over top what we were flying, our propeller planes. Um, and we offered a hundred thousand dollars to anybody who could bring us a MiG and, and full asylum. And somebody did. They flew a fully loaded combat ready MiG and landed it in South Korea, gave it to the US military. Now we didn't want to uh, there was an armistice at the time, and we didn't want to violate that, so we offered to give the MiG back to the rightful owners, because you're know, stealing property and international law, getting away. Uh, but nobody came forward, because who's the real owner? Uh, because we're fighting the North Koreans, yet the MiGs are flying out of a base in China, and the MiGs been supplied by the Russians, but we're fighting the North Koreans. So nobody stepped forward and said, that's our plane, right? The Chinese certainly wouldn't because they're not in a war against us, are they? So um, we said, sure, you can have your plane back. Nobody came for it. We took it apart. We looked at it. The MiG is a piece of crap. The one good quality it has going for it is its engine. 